just uh, some words of introduction to just to explain where I speak from, so to speak. Uh, I work in the European Commission, uh, managing the Europe for Citizens program, and through this program, we support um, active citizenship and democratic participation, which means that in our portfolio of projects, we have many uh, examples of, of uh, active participation, including through, uh, through a participation. Just to, to zoom in, as it were, a bit on the, on the topic of today, for, uh, for the Union, for the European Union, the issue of uh, uh, e-participation is uh, really uh, crucial for, from a democratic uh, viewpoint. And the stakes couldn't be higher. Because, I mean, the issue of uh, participation is important for every level of governance, arguably the local level, the regional level, the national level, but also very much uh, for the EU level, because uh, in this proverbial uh, search, you know, for a, a European demos, uh, the need for the use of uh, electronic participation tools, as have been uh, eloquently uh, defined by, by Carolina, are, are essential uh, when you talk about a transnational, uh, multicultural, political uh, body, the, uh, the need to use e-participation uh, tools um, is, is, really, um, is really obvious. E-participation is also a must nowadays in, in every uh, democracy and at every democratic level, but it's, it's really um, essential for, for the European level of, uh, of governance. I will really do, uh, I will focus on, on very few, uh, few elements um, this afternoon and perhaps distinguishing three basic uh, functions uh, let's say, uh, uh, of, um, of e-participation. I will talk about information, then a consultation, and then decision making, and, and review a bit the tools that are available to uh, either you know, citizens or organized civil society, let's say, to, to participate uh, electronically uh, in, the, uh, in the European democracy. Information. First, uh, talking about information may sound uh, a bit uh, basic. Indeed, uh, information is the bare minimum uh, that, uh, that citizens can expect from uh, um, public administrations or, or public institutions, including uh, European, um, European institutions. But it is a precondition for, for e-participation. So, uh, uh, information and transparency of the EU institution is part of e-participation to the extent that it enables monitoring by, uh, by citizens of what the uh, EU institutions are, are doing. Uh, I would argue that uh, the policy on transparency uh, and uh, uh, access to information by EU uh, institutions uh, is, is quite developed and, uh, and is probably uh, uh, among, let's say, the, the, the highest standards across, uh, across the Union. For instance, the access to document legal regime is uh, arguably uh, among the most liberal uh, regimes of uh, access to documents across the, the continent. Uh, the uh, open data policy of the EU institutions is quite advanced huh? as part of the, the digital single market agenda. The, the Commission, the EU institutions are pushing really uh, quite, quite forcefully an access to, to public data and is applying to itself this, um, this agenda. Uh, of course, of course, the, the situation is uh, not perfect. Uh, for instance, the uh, uh, access of uh, citizens to deliberations in uh, council working groups, for instance, is often uh, criticized, as is the possible access of citizens to the final legislative deliberations between the council and the parliament in, in trilogue. So there remain some areas in which uh, information is not perfect and uh, doesn't allow a full and, and complete uh, control by citizens. But 
by and large, I would say that, uh, that the information and uh, transparency policy of EU institutions is quite, quite developed. Um, a subtopic of the information issue uh, for the uh, EU institutions and access electronically to, to information, of course, at the European level, is the issue of multilingualism. That's an added uh, difficulty. Huh? Uh, beyond the principle that citizens should be able to contact and receive a response from any institution in any of the EU official languages, um, we all know that, for instance, uh, websites uh, are still uh, unfortunately dominated by, um, by some languages. So the, the situation is, um, is not perfect there either. But still, the principle is, uh, is there. Uh, the, uh, the web pages of the, of the Union are uh, fairly accessible in, um, in uh, all languages. Information can always be uh, requested in one's language, which means that uh, uh, any citizen can request information in her or his uh, language. So uh, accessibility is an issue, but uh, let's say there is a conscious effort on the side of the EU institutions to, to try to, to enable uh, accessibility. There's the issue of going beyond what I've just said, beyond the official journal, so to speak. And uh, here I would say that uh, EU institutions have been gearing up towards an active e-information policy, which means that it's not enough to, to be able to pretend that in some corner of, um, of a complex uh, website, one could find the information to, uh, you know, to feed uh, the, the democratic uh, debate. The issue is to uh, package it as it were to make it understandable and usable to, uh, to citizens. And uh, nowadays, the Agora, uh, particularly for discussions at the, uh, at the European level, is an electronic uh, Agora. Uh, and the, the Agora are uh, social media for better or for worse. You know, there are many issues related to this and that, that will be the debate of another conversation, I guess. But, uh, um, be that as it may, the, the EU institutions need to adapt to this and have adapted to this. So now you have a, a more active uh, and very active, I would even say, a social media policy of the EU uh, institutions. For instance, I could mention the example of the uh, viral uh, campaign of the European Parliament ahead of the, the last uh, elections. Let's say uh, they, they decided to have a, a much more um, active uh, campaign in the run-up to uh, to the uh, to the elections. Another example I could mention is uh, the campaign called Les Decodeurs by the uh, European Commission representation in in France, which is a fake news debunking active uh, campaign. Um, by uh, by the representation of um, of the Commission in, in France to let's say, contribute in a way to to the discussion and and provide uh, to, to citizens uh, the the uh, the opinion of the institutions to to debunk some some news. Last point on uh, information is the uh, direct uh, contact with the elected uh, representative. Uh, and, and politicians, let's say. That's, that can be done by, uh, by chatting uh, or having a contact with the, uh, your uh, member of the European Parliament. And uh, nowadays, it's pretty easy, in a way, to, to have a sort of e-interaction with, uh, with a member of the European Parliament, uh, either through um, Twitter, Facebook, um, the, uh, the politicians, the elected officials they are nowadays uh, quite reachable through electronic means and that's that's e participation uh, at the at the commission what the uh, commissioners do are uh, or high officials do are uh, citizens dialogue i don't know if some of you have uh, participated to this but uh, now uh, due to covid they are increasingly going online and um, that's probably a feature that's here to stay even beyond the uh, the epidemic situation 
President von der, von der Leyen uh, on her side has been increasingly doing live chat lately. So that's part of uh, what informing is, or is about, and that allows direct e-participation by citizens with uh, all the levels of the uh, EU institutions. Second point then, you know, going deeper, so to speak, in, uh, in the field of e-participation is a more active participation to what the EU institutions are doing. And that's the issue of, of consultation. Uh, consulting citizens or stakeholders uh, is not uh, a novelty. Um, this was done, let's say, long before by uh, organizing, you know, uh, contacts with all possible stakeholders. The uh, European institutions and the, the European Commission, particularly over the past, I mean, it's more than a decade, eh? uh, over the past 20 years, has been increasingly refining uh, its, uh, its policy in this respect. Uh, that was part of a, a policy called, you know, better regulation. The need to incorporate consultation of all possible stakeholders, including, you know, all citizens, before uh, designing any new policy, any new piece of, uh, of legislation. And that's uh, very much the case now. Through the, the portal called EU Have You Say, it was called before Your Voice in Europe, anybody can participate to the, um, to the shaping uh, of uh, new uh, policies or, or new pieces of uh, legislation. Um, okay, admittedly, sometimes the consultation uh, uh, span uh, can be quite limited, you know, several weeks, you know, eight weeks or 12 weeks. There are known uh, limitations uh, to, uh, to the consultation uh, also. For instance, uh, one frequent uh, criticism of um, electronic consultations on, on, for instance, on pieces of uh, legislation is that it gives way to a possible capture of the debate by lobbies or, or, or whatnot. In any case, to look let's say, at the positive side of things, nowadays it is totally uh, a, a principle, a firm principle, that any uh, new policy, any new uh, piece of legislation uh, is preceded by an electronic consultation of uh, any uh, possible stakeholder uh, across the, the union. And this consultation of citizens, so it is systematic for anything that is in the work program of the European Commission, but it, it is also now commonplace for wider projects. And here comes the issue of the conference on the, on the future of Europe, uh, on which uh, Daniela will, will give much more uh, uh, details on, also building on the very recent uh, experience uh, of, let's say, consultations of citizens on, uh, on the future of Europe, the, uh, the initiative that had been uh, launched by, um, by President Macron uh, a couple of years ago. Third level, I would say, is uh, decision making. The tools that are there to enable stakeholders or you know, citizens electronically to participate in a way or to stimulate EU decision making at, at the European uh, level. Um, as uh, mentioned by uh, Philippe, for instance, there's the, the tool of the, uh, the petition to the European Parliament. It is an often, let's say, uh, less known instrument, but it can be uh, effective. Uh, quite strikingly, for instance, uh, this, this very Monday, uh, I was having a, a discussion with a, an Irish uh, lady who, it was a decade ago, but she submitted a petition uh, because the, uh, the road close to her home in, uh, in Ireland was in a very poor state. And she managed uh, to, to have something done about it through a petition to, uh, to the European Parliament. So that's, that's a tool 
uh, that uh, that would deserve to be uh, to be better known. You know, any any citizen can submit a petition to uh, to the European Parliament to uh, to stimulate either uh, a policy discussion or, or discussion on a particular situation or topic on any any subject within the, the competence of the uh, of the EU. The then the uh, this is the most important arguably a uh, tool uh, for um, associating uh, citizens uh, electronically to, to the EU decision making is the uh, European uh, Citizens Initiative. And uh, probably uh, Peter will, uh, will say a word about it because ECAS, uh, his organization is quite heavily involved in, uh, in this. It's the, uh, the European Citizens Initiative. I'm sure that many of you is um, is aware of it huh, with uh, collecting at least one million signatures um, in paper and online, hence the, the link to e-participation in at least seven EU countries. And we don't leave, let's say, uh, the potential creators of such initiatives uh, alone uh, in the dark, so to speak, because um, a support system has been created to, to help uh, people uh, make concrete use of this uh, participation tool, mostly an e-participation tool. Uh, and that's the, um, the European Cit Citizens Initiative Forum. You know that this week is European Citizens Initiative uh, Week. So lots of discussions are, are had uh, about this, uh, this very important tool that has been reformed lately. Uh, and it's interesting to, uh, to know that the um, the European uh, Commission has uh, learned the lessons from implementing the sort of first phase of this very important tool that is the, the European Citizens Initiative Pool to, to stimulate even um, more uh, initiatives. The uh, last uh, tool that I would mention, of course, is um, e-participation around around elections of course uh, the uh, the elections particularly the european elections are a very uh, important uh, moment for for the uh, european democracy and e participation is key um, at uh, at that time and uh, increasingly i believe we see um, we see the uh, the european parliament elections being a topic of the e uh, democracy uh, in any case uh, european uh, parliament candidates let's say increasingly use um, electronic means and uh, and social media as a way to to campaign and to to rally support and to uh, mobilize citizens and um, and supporters so i mentioned information consultation decision making uh, I, I would conclude by mentioning the elements of control because uh, in, a, in a democracy, in the European democracy, uh, control, enabling control by, uh, by citizens is almost as important as, uh, as giving uh, way to, to participation. Um, for quite a, a long time, the, the institutions have set up uh, electronic systems to allow an easy uh, complaint system for cases of uh, non-application of EU law or um, infringement of uh, EU law. Uh, so it's very easy to, to submit a complaint if you have a problem of non-implementation of internal market uh, regulations through the system called Solve It. You know, there's a website, you Google Solve It, and there you will be guided to report uh, an alleged um, breach of implementation of uh, EU law. Same goes for uh, something that doesn't necessarily concern you, but if you see that where you live and EU environmental law doesn't seem to be, uh, to be respected by the national or local level, you can, you know, through a website, and that's e-participation, report uh, what you consider is an infringement of uh, EU law. And that's that's really uh, user friendly and uh, and easy to uh, to use. 
you can even uh, suggest simplification or modification of EU legislation through the Fit for Future platform. So if you think that EU law, present EU law is too complicated to, to be implemented, that's the platform where, uh, where you can uh, submit it. Another example of uh, e-participation. There's the uh, uh, European Ombudsman. So uh, it's got to be used for uh, suspected cases of maladministration by EU institutions. So uh, it deals with the pathology of, uh, of uh, European uh, administration, but uh, still is an, an important institution. Over the, uh, the last years, the, uh, the Ombudsman has been um, an increasingly active um, institution, let's say, in, uh, in Brussels, and uh, has taken um, a very important role in facilitating, um, let's say, access uh, to EU institutions by, uh, by EU citizens. So, I mean, it would deserve it's a development of its own, but just to just to underline that uh, the the European Ombudsman uh, has been a promoter, let's say, of uh, e-participation in the widest meaning of the um, of the word. Uh, what could we say to conclude? I have mentioned too long a list, and I hope it it hasn't been a, a tedious of the different. Uh, tools in the toolbox uh, of the European Union in terms of, uh, of e-participation, but maybe uh, the, right, the right issue is what doesn't exist yet. What are the, the tools that's, that are not there and that would need to be there to, to foster uh, participation through electronic means at the, at the EU level? We've got many, many projects uh, dealing with this. We don't shy away from, let's say, trying to expose what we could in, improve at the European level. For instance, um, crowdsourcing legislation at the EU level hasn't been done. And that could be uh, an interesting uh, avenue. It has been done in other countries. You know, the, in Iceland, they have crowdsourced a draft uh, constitution. In France, they, uh, they have crowdsourced uh, digital uh, legislation, and it is done um, in many other places. So that that could be an avenue. E-budgeting uh, has been done also uh, elsewhere uh, as a tool for participatory uh, budgeting. For the moment, it hasn't been done at the European level, but could be considered and, uh, and envisaged. E-deliberation and e-voting has been uh, has been used recently by the European Parliament in the COVID context, but is, is association of you know, citizens through electronic means to, to some deliberation um, possible at the European level, let's say the, the, uh, the question could, could, be, um, could be posed. Another relevant aspect is um, what are the conditions and uh, enablers out of the EU institution towards a meaningful e-participation at the EU level. And then, there beyond, let's say, uh, the EU institutions uh, or, uh, or administration uh, is um, the importance of, of civil society, of uh, independent and uh, professional media, of media literacy many many important aspects that we support through uh, the, the the projects in, uh, within the europe for citizens uh, program that are the external checks and balances uh, that are necessary and indispensable to democracy and e-democracy and uh, e-participation uh, alike um, i trust that uh, that peter and daniela will uh, elaborate on uh, on those uh, aspects or it could be the the topic of the follow-up uh, webinar.